So I'm really looking forward to this weekend. Um, Ryan's coming up, so we're uh, going to get a few more drone shots. The weather's looking great, so hopefully it'll be nice and calm, ready for the uh, little quadcopter to go up in the air. Um, but we're going to get stuck into our tanks. There's a few reasons we're doing this at the moment. So um, one of our uh, sponsors has come on board and uh, he's given us all of the paint basically to do the tanks, which is phenomenal. It saves us a huge amount of time and effort. Um, we've got a great deal from the local sandblaster to blast the tanks out. So um, that's going to save me about two months if I was to do it myself. Um, so it gives us a big jump in progress. And finally, it means that we can actually really start getting into our veggie oil conversion. So blasting the tanks out, cutting them and blasting the tanks out is stay one of our veggie oil conversion. So let's get into it. Uh, let's go get some blocks. We'll make some train tracks and we'll roll them out. Oh yeah, just gotta make sure they're the right height. <laughs> So Ryan and me are going to start cutting into this fuel tank. Um, we've got two grinders, so we're going to have uh, a go. We've never done dual grinding before, um, so that'll be fun. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so anyway, we cut the straights with a grinder and then cut the corners with a plasma. So um, yeah, first step is let's get these straights cut out and then we'll climb inside with a plasma cutter after that. I tried to rationalize it. But I find you mesmerizing Yeah, I tried so hard to fight it But the moves were fast as lightning I think we both know that the trouble My vigilance is on the double Cause if the one is just my head in Get the other job done. I've got to cut the tank behind me um, and uh, obviously mark out where I'm going to cut it so it goes and fits between all the ribs. Um, so we have a few tricks. We use five inch cutoff discs as the radius for the corners. That way we know pretty much every single corner is always going to be roughly the same radius. Um, and we also, uh, now that we've cut the other side, we've got a better idea and a better ability to be able to measure this side. So um, we'll get stuck into it and uh, see if we can cut it this hole. So 
I know the ribs are um, 450 millimeters apart. So what I want to do is basically draw in roughly where I know the ribs to be so that then I can mark in the hole in the size so I don't cut any stupid you know, angles or whatever and end up having to cut through a rib where I don't want it and all of that sort of stuff. So a um, little bit of preliminary marking out saves a huge amount of effort later on. Thinking about plasmering it from this side. Then, if anyone's going to catch on fire, it's not going to be me. So this is the corner, or one of the corners on the um, uh, on the hole that we're cutting out of the boat. So we've cut along here with a cutoff disc, and then we've also sort of cut this straight edge here, and then we're going to use the plasma to blast this um, radius. The, there's a really good reason why we put radiuses on all of the curves on everything we cut. So if you can have a look at some of these older stuff, you can sort of see the weld line around here. Like every single thing that we cut and replace in the hull, we always put a radius on because if we were to do that as a square, you get a stress point right in the corner and it's really hard. If it starts to crack, it'll crack in the corner and it can come out from the corners or whatever. Um, some metals are worse than others, alloy is much worse than, than steel, but if you put a radius in it like that, there's no one sort of hard point to get a, a, like a stress crack happening or, or any sort of um, issues like that. So that's why whenever you look at older repairs on boats like this, they'll always have rounded corners. So here's one here. So that square is donkey's years old. That's been done when they like when the boat was in survey, and you can sort of see they've done a bit of a, a shit ass radius up here, but the rest of them are pretty good. Um, it's only a really small hole. That would have been just to check the um, the crash bulkhead. Um, but yeah, it gives you an idea. That's the reason why we do all of our radiuses. an idea of like the rust and stuff so it's not really rust clinging to the surface of the steel it's actually just mostly grime and diesel and sort of crud and tar and crap like that so it's sort of quite big and flaky let's come over this side I'll see if we can show you so just try and block some of that light for you but you can sort of see there come right up close and if I try and you sort of see that it just comes off straight away like it doesn't hold onto the tank at all and then you're left, once you, set, once you water blast it and you like break it all up into small bits, you're just left with like a real fine dust. 
So down the bottom of the tank, that's all been water blasted. So it just looks like mud, like clay and mud and shit like that. Um, yeah, so then we, from there we just literally dig it out and then vacuum it out and that's how we clean the tanks out. It's actually really, really simple to clean steel diesel tanks. There's some things I want to change on the design in this tank. So you can see this pipe just here. That's the filler pipe for the fuel. So it comes pretty much all the way down to the bottom of the tank. So that it, um, so there you go, right down to the bottom of the tank. And there's a plate, so it's a bit hard to see at the moment, but this, there's a steel plate just in here um, that's, I don't know, six inches away from the pipe. So this gap here is about six inches or so. Um, and it stops, so it stops surge in the fuel tank, but it also stops digging up heaps of rubbish underneath, like, because it hits that plate, it doesn't hit, like, buckets and buckets of gunk. But, if you have a look under the side there, there's, there's like, I don't know, 12 inches of just rubbish and junk that's built up under it, so you physically can't actually get under there to clean it out. So what I'm going to do is cut that plate out, because um, it's impossible to basically get in behind it to clean it, and therefore sandblast and or paint it. Um, but because we can't have mild steel in the tank, I'm going to get rid of this pipe altogether. I know that's going to mean we have a slight increase of surge, or the possibility of surge, but if we have the lid on tight enough and the lid doesn't leak, then that should be manageable. Um, but the reason I have to get rid of the mild steel is, again, that's the whole reason we're sandblasting these tanks, so it doesn't oxidise the oil. Under those pipes, that's the garbage that came out. That was that was actually that was just what I was able to shovel out of the port tank. So out of the starboard tank, probably there was twice as much as that. Um, but let me show you around the ground. I got my tools everywhere, but you can sort of see that the ground's all discolored. That sort of browny, rusty sort of colour, basically everywhere. Streams were sort of running away. That's probably a good 50% of all of the garbage that came out was washed out of the tank as like just tiny red silt um, so it gives you an idea of how much rubbish these tanks can accumulate so yeah it's quite surprising but um, that's what happens inside a steel tank if you don't clean them so as the tanks cut open we now know what we are working with um, we've ripped out all of the old mild steel pipe work that was inside the tanks um, some of it was buggered and uh, the rest of it pretty much had to come out so that we could start our veggie oil conversion so what we're going to do next is uh, replace the mild steel pipework that's been cut out with stainless pipework. Um, we still have to paint that, it's no good for the veggie oil just as, as raw stainless, um, but it's better than mild steel. So we're going to be replacing our tank pickups, um, our main transfer feed pickup, and then also um, the system that we use to tell if we hit something with ice with the crash bulkhead just behind me, we've got a pipework system in one of the tanks um, that we can essentially tell if we've breached the hull from inside the cofferdam quite safely. Um, so we've got to replace all of that, that has to be working absolutely spot on when we hit the ice. gonna cry when you're gone Where will you go? Won't you 
is the ones you know I'll be here, hanging on, waiting for your call Seems like time, as a wave passing by 